Today's episode is brought to you by history being made. Every team in the Overwatch League finally has a win. It's high noon. Hello, everyone, and welcome to High Noon Podcast, the competitive Overwatch podcast. I'm your host, Blevins. With me, as always, is Deathblow. What's up, buddy? You're here. My workload is tremendously lighter. <laughs> Therefore, I am phenomenal. Thanks for coming back, my friend. <laughs> I had to. I mean, never never want to leave, but sometimes... <laughs> sometimes you want to duty, leave. Duty calls. <laughs> not this no, time, though. Not, not this time. time. Not, not this time, but uh, duty calls. You got you to gotta be there, so... Yeah, I'm back and I'm ready for action. Although I'm still, I'm like catching up from being gone for a week and <laughs> getting nothing done. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna jump right into it and get uh, get talking about some sweet, sweet Overwatch League action. But before that, let's talk about what's going on in the world of High Noon Productions. Of course, steady, no matter what, rain, sleet, snow, or hail, you're getting the Black Watch report every week. Make sure you check them out. All of your contenders in Path to Pro. Knowledge being dished out by Thorn Rain and Kyle Wynn. And for the record, today in Buffalo was snow. But yes. you'll still be getting you'll still be getting Exactly. Better. Literally snow today. <laughs> Actual scumbag weather. Uh, but yes, make sure to check out the new episode of the Blackwatch Report for sure. Um, sorry, I, I I come back. I literally haven't sat in the seat and recorded, and everything's still <laughs> messed up um, somehow. But hopefully, by at okay. least halfway through the episode, I'll have my audio <laughs> and visual set up and ready to go. <laughs> uh, um, foul play, of course. A Smith and Deathblow held the torch, kept the torch going last week. We will be recording another live episode right after this. Which of course is at twitch.tv slash high noon podcast. Um, we're gonna be Sans, the newly crowned Dad Smith. But it will just be us for foul play this week. But we will be talking about all of your great Overwatch League, fantasy Overwatch League action for the week. And around the payload, uh, we had two weeks ago and we'll be having next week again. Apologies. The the week off threw me off and uh, I'm resetting. We're going to have one next <laughs> week at some point, <laughs> I swear. But before we get into the news league, let's talk about what we did this week. Deathblow, anything fun and exciting for you, sir? Um, no, I couldn't play any Smash Brothers because some jerk went out of town. So hey, we played to, yesterday. I had to buy uh, Madden uh, for PC, which, no, I'm pumped because it hasn't okay. been on PC in forever. Um, also, it was $15, so I oh, can't that, really say okay. no to that. I take uh, back my uck. I, I, my uck was prefacing the fact that you paid $60 for that game. No, no, no. I, I probably will for the next one since when it's on PC, but sure. Um, yeah, no, not for, not for an old one. I was really happy about that. I was like prepared to spend the full sixty on it, even though it was old. Um, and then I like saw the Bills roster, and I'm like, no, no, no. I want the new play. I want the ones we just signed. Break <laughs> them in, or I'm I'm done. Um, but no, otherwise, I mean, Game of Thrones is back, so True. my life is tremendously better than it was last week. Uh, we had the Houston Outlaws back in action. We'll be talking a good amount more about that matchup coming up in a little bit. Yes. So. Uh, be ready for that and yeah just overall pretty good week how about you my friend yeah for me like i said i was off i had some family stuff to take care of that was not super fun and i couldn't get a lot of esports stuff done unfortunately but i'm back in action now one thing i want to talk about was if you're watching if you're on the podcast i'm sorry i'm going to try my best to describe this but if you're watching live i got one of the um what is it called alt Alt esports or whatever the collab uh, fleece sweaters got the Toronto Defiant one. It's uh, it's pretty nice. I'm not like overly thrilled about it. Um, I don't know. They said it was like designer quality, which maybe it is. But I have another. All I'll say is I have another fleece that's not Overwatch League branded that is of much nicer quality in my eyes it's much softer and nicer but it's not overwatch league so 
and also my girlfriend and also my girlfriend stole it. So I guess I'm wearing this one <laughs> for multiple reasons. Um, but I really yeah. need to get some Toronto merch. But man, I'm just not big on buying clothes that I know don't fit me. This would so this is this would definitely not fit you. This is the biggest size they have, which is a two X, and they I would say. 2X. Yeah, I would say this be a is a hand puppet. Right. I would say this is on the smallish side of, of the 2X spectrum. It's definitely not a big 2X. Sometimes there's there's big ones. I have a I think it's a 4X jersey which I forgot to bring. Um but I have the 4X Toronto jersey that might fit you cuz that one's pretty big. Yeah, we got to yeah, try that. This would definitely not. Um if you are on the fence about buying one, um I would probably lean towards no. There's pro- there's other merch. If you want to spend however ex- overly expensive this is on merch, uh, you can probably get a better value out of other merch. But it's a fine – if you specifically want the color it, – it's it's like minimalistic, which I like, um, but it's almost like to a fault. And they didn't have the pink – colorway for toronto that i wanted they only have it for some teams so i don't know shots fired yeah overall probably uh, i'm like neutral leaning towards pass if you're even a little bit on the fence but if you have any more questions you can hit me up on discord i'm more than happy to give you an honest review of this hashtag not an ad uh let's move on here and jump right into oh my god i i actually pressed the button on the f- news on the first try for probably the first time ever but i didn't have the sounds ready so it didn't even load up right away so upset. It's okay i had to do the sounds with my voice last week so <laughs> even on a delay it's going to be improved this time <laughs> only slightly had a couple of uh coaching announcements here uh for news promises joined the la valiant as an assistant coach and NYXL has signed uh, Juan Jin Park, who was formerly of Sky Foxes and X6 Gaming. I'm going to go out on a limb here, Death, and say we don't have a ton of information <laughs> on who these guys are. Wait a minute. You know even... we don't have detailed info on Overwatch coaches? This is crazy. Yeah. Uh, this is a lot of these coaches, unless they're specifically former Overwatch League pros or big name old timers. This is going to definitely be a Blackwatch report type of discussion, especially coming from Sky Foxes and X6. What I will say at a high level, without even knowing who these people are, is that uh, kudos on LA Valiant for adding an assistant coach when they were clearly in need of something, um, something to change. And, yeah, NYXL, I believe, what was the actual title? Let me see what the tweet Oh, nope, apparently that page doesn't exist, but... Was he like a strategic coach for NYXL? I feel like it said it somewhere. I remember. I thought I remembered seeing it. Maybe it didn't. I believe he was, but yeah, you sure did break that link pretty good. Yeah, I did. I don't know why. Um, but yeah. So I mean, I'm I'm happy about I guess both of these just because I want to see. I always want to see the teams get better, um, unless they're the Dallas Fuel because I now I now finally have ironically fueled my hatred for the Fuel. Um, after this week, <laughs> but, um, yeah, seeing the teams add coaching staff, this is good. I mean, obviously adding players is a little bit more of a, it's, it's a sexier move, obviously from the social aspect and from the hype aspect, people aren't really going to be super hyped about coaching. I don't think for the most part, but at the he end of the day, coach okay. for Atlantic, so. this is, this is uh, really interesting because we see the actual dead last team in the standings and the actual number one or two depending uh i don't know what the at the moment yeah the actual dead last and the actual number one team both adding coaches so uh yeah it 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 seems like regardless of where you are in the standings you can stand to get some more coaching get some more eyes on the the game tape get another uh alternate angle i mean we've talked about this since the beginning of overwatch league even beforehand where it, when you're in a sporting environment, you've got so many different moving parts that it absolutely helps to have more eyes and more specialized eyes on certain things. You've got defensive coordinators in football. You've got hitting coaches in baseball. Um, you know, you've got very specialized coaches that are going to be able to add certain things. And I mean, 
having more eyes on your team is always going to be helpful. So even though uh, we personally don't know a ton about these guys, uh, it's nice to see that uh, we're seeing coaching uh, added at all points in the standings. Any any other words on these coaching changes, Death? No, sums up my views perfectly. Excellent. Uh, the last part here, uh, I'll give one pass to the fuel uh, here because this uh, was an interest. This is actually an interesting little thing I, I stumbled upon completely outside of looking at Overwatch content. I just had this, like, I saw this as an ad and was like, what? Uh, <laughs> a new animated series that's sponsored by Jack in the Box is called Fuel House. It is literally what you think it is. It is a short comedy animated series about the Dallas Fuel House that stars uh, the likenesses of Dallas Fuel players. I think Mickey is there, Effect is there, OGE, and I think it is... Um, God, I'm forgetting who the other player was. Who's the French... I'm, I'm completely Unco. blanking. Unco! Why was I thinking Verbo? Uh, okay. Unco. <laughs> That's their French player. Uh, yeah, Really, an interesting little thing. I, do you remember back in the day, Death, the uh, the Tempo Storm animated series that they did for Hearthstone? Like, we had Ruben Bressler on the show because he was one of the writers, and it was like, uh, I remember interviewing Ruben. Yeah, it was a little animated series comedy base that was just about like a gaming house. This is the same premise, except I think it's a little more concise here. It was interesting. Take a look at it. Um, I'll post a link in the description. It's very clearly um ad content like when i saw it it was literally like ad stink but branded content doesn't but it's still an ad like it literally said that uh and it's jack in the box they're talking about jack like i don't want to spoil the episode the episodes are 30 seconds long uh but jack from jack in the box is a character um so yeah um i just threw up in my mouth a little bit yeah i don't know just throw that out there. What I'll say in summation of this is screw the Dallas fuel, but the creative content that is still advertising, I'm much more in favor of than just generic ads. So, And uh, also, we at BlizzCon, we had a Jack in the Box next door to our hotel room, and their breakfast was pretty good. So I'll give Jack in the Box a thumbs up. Uh, overall, I'll give it a thumbs up. Whatever that steak was, I will never get again. That burrito did not sit well with me, and that steak was not... <laughs> ever anything that was ever living um, gotta, gotta learn what to order on a menu like that. true true <laughs> gotta give it some time so uh, overall i'll give it a thumbs up as well um uh, but this is not a show about food although maybe we should just start no, okay uh we're gonna move on here God. i'm already getting already getting sidetracked we're gonna move on here too it's tournament talk We are going to go over the results of the week. Starting off on Thursday, we had the Paris Eternal win 3-1 over the Florida Mayhem. NYXL pulling out the unexpected JK uh, 4-0 versus Washington Justice. Uh, let me correct that to an official 5-0. Uh, we had Vancouver Titans win 3-1 over Seoul Dynasty. And the Philadelphia Fusion take out the Toronto Defiant 3-1. to On Friday, we had the LA Valiant get their first win of the season. History was made as every single team in the Overwatch League Season 2 now has a win. They win 3-2 to two over the Atlanta Reign. Hong Zhao Spark win 3-2 to two over the Boston Uprising. And San Francisco Shock continue their tear through Stage 2 of the Overwatch League with a 4-0 over the Guangzhou Charge. On Saturday, we had Shanghai Dragons win 3-1 over the Chengdu Hunters. London Spitfire taking out Philadelphia Fusion 2-1. to one. Vancouver Titans winning 3-1 to one over Houston Outlaws, and we will be talking more about this at the end of this segment. Dallas Fuel, my most hated team in the Overwatch League now, went 4-0 against my beloved Toronto Defiant. And the LA Gladiators get a 4-0 victory over the Guangzhou Charge. Rounding it out on Sunday, we had Dallas Fuel, again, most hated team in Overwatch League, win 2-1 over Ferris Eternal. Atlanta Rain win 3-1 to one over the Washington Justice. NYXL pull out yet another 5-0 against Florida Mayhem. And the Los Angeles Gladiators win out the battle for LA 2-1 to one over the LA Valiant. 
Let's start with the depressing news here, Death, as the Northerners ourselves. What in the world happened to Toronto here? We had such high hopes. We made the playoffs in Stage 1. We came out to an all-right start last week, and then this week was the worst week we've seen in technically in franchise history, albeit a short one. <laughs> I mean, history, hey, history technically true. Been... <laughs> Te- <laughs> Technically true. The Toronto Defiant have never gone zero and two in a week before. That's true. Um, so listen, it's. I was more curious what you thought about this because you've never rooted for a team that's lost twice in a week like you're, this before ever. You're 100 percent correct. And uh, so I just more or less wanted to talk about this just to, even though I root for Toronto, I just feel the need to rub the rub your nose in this a little bit. Okay, uh, so I, I it. You you were there because when – okay, losing to Philly, all right. I, I, I talked about – well, I didn't talk about it because I wasn't on I'm the show, but I tweeted it. about it. I tweeted about, like, hey, we've got Philly, we've got Boston, we've got shock this stage. I didn't even factor in the fuel, okay? This is how shell-shocked I am. We've got three winnable matches that are really going to prove, you know, where where the Toronto Defiant stand. Um in this league right now in this new meta and you know they lost to boston in a in a heartbreaker reverse sweep three to two we lose to philadelphia fusion and i mean after losing to the fuel not just losing to the fuel but losing 4-0 to the fuel i don't even want to i'm not even talking about a win against the san francisco shock next week i think they're playing it next excuse me playing them next week um but second, second game of the week. Second game of the week. Okay. Um, right. I, I, of course, I wrote all of this down. Um, <laughs> we're going to be talking about it later. God, I'm so frazzled right now. Uh, just thinking about the Dallas Fuel winning ma- just makes my blood boil. But like I, I, I messaged you on Discord right as it happened, and I, I think I said verbatim, "We're living in the worst timeline right now." <laughs> like, yeah, I was a little upset you didn't say "darkest timeline" because that would have been the the truest reference. But we'll. Us community super fans will have to let you slide on that one because it's it's an homage nonetheless. Um, I, yeah, it's a, it's a rough go, but listen, this is an expansion team. Yes. This is an expansion team. Despite rooting for them, I wasn't particularly high on coming into the year, mm-hmm. so they overperformed in stage one, True. and I think we're seeing a, some correction on that. Um, I also want to correct here too. To me, Dallas was the much more difficult of the two matchups this this week. Sure. I don't think Philly is playing particularly well at all. Um, I think they're a bit of a hot mess at the moment, and Dallas is kind of the opposite. Now, this is the first chance we'd gotten to see them this stage, so we didn't know for certain what was going on, but we knew how good they were in the last GOATS meta. We knew they upgraded significantly in the off-tank position. Uh, We thought maybe they became a little less flexible, but it turns out Note can actually play Hanzo and Tracer and like literally Mm -hmm. everything under the sun, and they showed us that this week. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm not um, hanging my head too much about dropping a match to Dallas here. Toronto has a 37-year-old DPS player that they just <laughs> added to the roster. Uh, so, obviously, that's sub Who is Who it is arguably – no, who is inarguably one of my top five favorite players in the league right now. I'm not sure where he falls yet in that in that top five, but he's definitely there. <laughs> Uh, he's, you know, and it's going to take some time to integrate him in. And also, they've done some switching back and forth between Roki and Aid on the main support position. Mm-hmm. So they're adding more roster inconsistency than they really needed to. Uh, we've kind of talked about this a little bit last stage, especially when we were shell shocked that Roki and his, with the big ball of mistakes that he was over the mm-hmm. first couple of weeks got the nod over Aid. But then Roki really stabilized, and then he got a little inconsistent later. Right. I don't care who they pick at this point. Just please pick one. Uh, and also, we're still in a GOATS meta, and that means main tank play is still super, super important. And Yakpung remains the issue on this team. Mm-hmm. He is kind of their weak point, despite the, the support problems that they're having. I think Yakpung is easily the, the weak link on the roster, um, and we're in a meta that really shines a spotlight on that. So yep. when you take away a DPS player that you've been scrimming with for how long, and you make some some support substitutions, and now you don't have that team cohesion to really mm-hmm. fill in the gaps and and kind of erase some of those problems. And we're talking about a team that you know one team fight away from being four and three instead of five and two in stage right. one, and then it's almost a completely different conversation because. True. 
the yeah. whole league it felt like was three and four or four and three last stage. So uh, it's definitely, you know, they were kind of a borderline upper middle of the pack team, but in my mind, they always kind of remain right in that middle of the pack. Um, mm-hmm. As far as power rankings go, things like that, I did not expect a five-two repeat performance. Uh, so yeah, listen, they've got a, they've got some things to answer. They've got some things to figure out. Uh, what are they? Are they O three on the stage right now? No, they're two or they're one and three, right? Yes. No. I'm check I'm checking. Right I'm pretty now. sure that they won against. They're one and three. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Who did they play right. first? No, I'm forgetting. Uh, rain. I'm biking on week one. Uh, probably rain because the rain were kind of a mess. Oh, Let's see here. Re- regard- oh, justice. Uh, they, they beat the justice. Oh, okay, good. That's good. That's good. Every, everybody should beat the justice. But nonetheless, uh, you know, it's they're, they're a team that that has problems. They were far from you know in contention in my mind to be the San Francisco Shock kind of a team that elevates and and kind of looks like they might be wanting to join the ranks of the the best teams in the league. Mm-hmm. So. I, I'm not panicked at all in Toronto. I think there's going to be ups. There's going to be good stages. There's going to be bad stages. Mm. Uh, this was a, a rough week. You know, Philly is another one of those mid-table teams. I think they're playing more towards the bottom of that particular table at the moment. But uh, nonetheless, Toronto, you know, has to, to get everything figured out. Uh, I'm 37 also. I mean, despite looking pretty good, and I just love the, the story of the path of him just speed mm-hmm. running through the path to pro and everything like that. As fun as that is, he's not really ever – at any point been a super standout Mm -hmm. Uh, so i think there's still some work to be done there he's got to get more comfortable he's got to continue to improve the one thing i think this team has going for them is the coaching staff it's exactly what we've Mm -hmm. been talking about for them all season long so Mm -hmm. let's give bishop some time to work with i'm 37 to figure out the support thing and but maybe I mean you've had those two supports for a long time, Bishop. So let's get that ironed out. We don't need to be yeah. trading back and forth in that in that any longer. Um, and at this point, there's no way Aid's going to finish as a top twenty support. So I'm not going to be losing any season long board bets to Thorn Rain. So just play Aid for it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's it's just going to be one of those things. They, this is an expansion team. They're going to have troubles. They're going to have metas that don't suit them perfectly. They're not stockpiled with elite you know star level talent necessarily um, they do have a couple here Neko, and there but right neko i think uh fate has a decent chance they're not fate, fate envy is, has a decent okay. chance i was to gonna be. say fate is not on the stage. <laughs> i oh my god i would love fate on the toronto defiant you just got my hopes up so high that that is honestly how great would that be right it'd that, be insane a, if if la is considering that toronto pick up that phone right now uh, I think yeah. it would really, really flip the. That would be an. In, that would be insane. Yeah, no, that. I need to stop thinking about it because now I, I just. Now, now your hopes are up. And now my yeah, hopes are yeah. way too high. That, that that's what I was talking about though, just and, give, and I tweeted out about it. You, my, you know some guys up in Toronto. Get me hired over there. That, that's true. You're you're my first suggestion. Um, <laughs> it, actually, you're probably my second suggestion because bare hands would be my first one, but. <laughs> Bear Hands needs an assistant. I would be. I would love to work with Bear. Hands I would love that 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 tag team though. Um, the point I, that I was talking about was like, yes, I got completely spoiled by NYXL. I happened upon the best team ever, and because you I don't didn't know. pick NYXL because you looked at the roster and said these are going to be the this is going to be the best team in Overwatch. League. In fact, if I would have made that if that is what I would have done, I would not have been an NYXL fan cuz I'm not that smart. Bare hands was that smart, I'm not that smart. Uh, <laughs> it, it it would not have happened. Um no, I I just happened upon NYXL and they happened to be amazing and I stuck with them. And you're you're right. I have not this is the first week where one of my teams has gone 0 2 in a week. I've gone through horrific losses in the playoffs, but for some reason, I don't know why, the playoffs just, I don't care as much about them. Even, even the end of season playoffs, which I definitely did care a lot about, but like I got over that. I got over that probably because I was so excited to just go to the finals regardless of yeah, which Yeah, we one. had that to look forward to. And also, like, it's over, right? So you're not sitting there going, you're like, oh, the season ended, and you can, like, process it and begin to move on. But when it's the regular season and your team slumps and you I've have a rough stage. got to look at those two losses right. the rest of the He's stage. like, I've got – I've got to worry. Now I don't know what they're going to do next week. And like, so you sit there and you agonize over it. And it's a very different 
feeling. I, I have uh, to live with the fact that I am a fan of a team that has lost to the Dallas Fuel, which up until this week has not been the case. So uh, I don't even know what that's like. <laughs> I know, I know, right? Isn't it? It's wow. just it's something I, I I wasn't ready to do, but uh, in all honesty and. Most jokes aside, uh, I do think going through this has made me a better fan overall. Although I do like being on my high horse elitist, my high horse elitist fan, where I can just say, "Oh yeah, my, my team's just going to win no matter what." I, I love do kicking like that. down a peg anytime. Anytime I can kick yeah. you down a peg, Blevins. I'm the high, the higher up you go, the faller down you fall. <laughs> <laughs> The faller down you fall. Uh, I said what I meant, and I meant what I said. Uh, Blevins' word is 100%. Okay, enough about that. Um, overall, the, the, my closing thoughts here, I do I, – I, one actually, maybe not closing points because maybe this opens up another conversation. We've talked personally about how we think just in general, overall, the expansion teams have been overrated. Um, by a lot of people. People were really, really hell-bent on Hangzhou Spark. They've kind of leveled off. People are still hell-bent on Vancouver Titans. They're the one team, I think, that's living up to the expectation that people put on before. But basically, every other expansion team, people overhyped, and there's something to be said about, like, we're now seeing, at the very least, a slight meta change. Like, obviously, Baptiste is in here. We're seeing We're seeing changes in the meta, even though we are still seeing some goats here. These teams that played last season where they went through how many different metas were there? At least at least three or four like distinct different metas. These teams are more adept and ready to be changing uh, and, and, and surviving through meta shifts. Um, a team like Toronto, a team like Justice, a team... I mean, a lot of teams are not ready to do that, especially these expansion teams. So I think it's going to take some time for the expansion teams to really kind of get to that level where... Okay, we know what it we know what it um, takes to be a play a stage playoff contending team in one stage, and then meta changes, and we can do we can run it right back again. Um, I think we're gonna it's gonna take some time for these teams to be able to do that, and also to flesh out their rosters. Like you said, I am thirty seven being in stellar retiring the rookie aid situation all make a lot of a lot of sense, and not not to mention not for nothing the fact that Neko at the very least, wasn't getting full scrim time preseason, right? Because he wasn't going to play the first three games. So a lot of things uh, leave me at least more optimistic today than I was after that (laughs) four loss to the Dallas Fuel. Um, And uh, definitely, definitely feeling good about it. So any last words on on that or expansion teams or anything in that? No, your Bad salty tricks. tears are all I need to do. <laughs> well, speaking of salty tears, let's talk about how the Houston Outlaws lost to the Vancouver Titans and how that's the end of the story and we don't need to talk anymore about it, right? That's that It should be. It should be, <laughs> Blevins. That should be the case. Um, it's not because the community be flipping out a little bit uh, about this one in particular. So <clears throat> if you guys didn't know, obviously Blevins gave you the score line. Um, coincidentally, exactly what I predicted in the match, by the way. Just going to throw that out there real fast. <laughs> um, so the match started and Houston comes out against the Vancouver Titans and bodied them on King of the Hill, right? And they're, they're a better King of the Hill team than I think almost anybody gives them credit for or realizes right now. Mm-hmm. They shut down the Vancouver Titans 2-0, take the map, and move on. And everybody's ears perk up a little bit and go, wait, what just happened? Okay. So they come out and it's Paris and Houston rolls out goats and Vancouver rolls out goats and four minutes of Houston just face bashing into the Vancouver goats. Uh, Later, Houston has full held on Paris and it's over. And that's very frustrating for me personally as a fan, because we are seeing a lot of other teams play DPS compositions Mm -hmm. on Paris and see some success with it. Uh, It's been, it's been working well for them. Uh, They've also been doing it against bunker compositions and that is not what Vancouver ran. So maybe it was a good read from Houston, but it was not executed well. And if you remember when I predicted this match, talking about it with Volamel, we skipped over it a little bit because I didn't want Volamel to be insulting my team on my show. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, we we talked about how essentially um, there was just no chance Houston was going to be able to outgoats the Vancouver Titans. They're 
the best, if not, you know, maybe second best. I really, until we see them line up against New York in a goats meta, I'm not going to call that a, a, a decided argument mm-hmm. or anything like that. Mono is in fact ridiculous as long as it's the regular season. Um, so yeah, that would be really interesting to see, but nonetheless, we, we get the point, right? Vancouver and New York are a cut above everybody at playing this meta and you're not going to stand up to them and beat them literally nobody has yet so after such a strong showing on triple dps they were playing arhan and linkser and uh, dante all at the same time with muma so it was a really fun comp it was really interesting we got to see arhan again that was great then we go to paris linkser comes out arhan stays in to man the brig and the goats which makes sense to me because goats play was not great for them in stage one so let's try somebody else at it that's all fine but so every essentially the 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 rest of the series passes. Vancouver wins three to one, and Houston never touches a DPS composition again. So everybody's pretty upset about it. Why doesn't Houston play DPS players? Like they look how good they were doing. Mm-hmm. Linkser was popping off. Everybody looked great. It was it was a very impressive performance from Houston. And to be fair to them, they played Eichenwald, one of their very good maps. I've been talking about for this stage really really well against vancouver almost won it they held them on defense on point two just weren't able to match quite what they what they held vancouver to in large part because bumper popped off and did what bumper does um so it was frustrating to me but not on that map right they they had a great strategy there they played it well and then they go into rialto that is a goats map anybody that tries to run anything but goats is probably just a fool and you shouldn't even consider doing it but mm-hmm. um i do think there's some room on paris specifically for them to have tried something else but if we look at what flame said in his response to kind of the community just play dps or, or just don't play goats forehead mm-hmm. um attitude he said you know he, he goes basically called everybody high level analysts with zero understanding of how dps comps fare on payload maps against goats uh you're not wrong but you're also paid quite a bit of money, right? To like devote your, so, right. like, I really want the pros to get out of like admonishing the rest of the world for right. not spending 60 hours a week studying DPS compositions and in, in a goats meta and all right. these things. That's your job. Okay. We're not, we're not less than or anything. Stop putting people down for working a nine to five and not having the time to, you know, throw their entire lives into video games. Mm-hmm. We're not all blessed like that. So that's frustrating for me. Um, but also it's just objectively to me why after three minutes of just getting stomped on paris point Mm. one don't you throw caution to the wind and pick a dps composition whether you already substituted doesn't even matter just put arhan on the pharaoh which we knows he play which we know he plays reasonably well Mm -hmm. and you put uh dante on the sombra it's just something different is it the best composition i don't know you're, you're the GM, you've got the coaching staff, you figure what out, the, out what the best composition is. I'll believe you if you tell me it's GOATS, but you're not beating that team in GOATS. You just had three right. minutes of face bashing to figure it out, so why don't you switch? So there's a little bit of back and forth there. Flame was on a vast stream, not having the best look or not, not presenting the best form of the argument. Mm-hmm. And then to kind of present the best form of the argument, and this comes from Bonnie on Twitter, Uh, He said, if you want to be the best, you have to win on the composition that is the best in greater than 50% of situations. To elaborate, I believe it makes the most sense to practice what you consider consider fundamental best strategy, then put those fundamentals to the test against the best team at it. If you lose, you use it to learn and evolve. That's a very level-headed great argument and he goes on to say practicing cheesy crazy cheeses that are only usable once to possibly beat the number one team in the league leaves you vulnerable for the rest of the stage once your strategies are deconstructed and it's a very easy way to fall into having a very bad overall season which Mm -hmm. is not their goal i love this form of the argument you're Mm -hmm. nothing about this is wrong except for that last minute on paris point one when scrim what you're going to scrim practice what you're going to practice but in the moment when you're being beaten handily and you have a handle on what the ultimate economy is and what is going on in the match throw caution to the wind and say what we're doing isn't working why can't you recognize that in the moment Mm -hmm. so to me the whole conversation the whole frustration boils down to paris point one right like you you get the attack there you roll with the somber composition like you accidentally steal point one like you just because you stealth the somber in the back they react a little poorly you get a you get a kill you stumble your way through it you fall into point two with an emp and you just quick cap it 
And then you, you roll out Moom on a bunker composition who's great sure. at the Orissa. You know, you just, you have some chance now. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, you win that map and all of a sudden you go into Eichenwald with all this momentum up to and oh, right. you know. Um, and, and all the while trying this costs you nothing because nobody gave you, everybody gave you about a 0% chance to win this matchup, you know. So if you fail trying something different, I don't think you look bad or anything like that. But I don't, nobody's asking you to have spent excessive or inordinate amounts of time scrimming on something other than goats. Mm-hmm. To me, this all boils down to throw caution to the wind. Um, and a lot of other content creators have been talking about this and, and it's just a conversation that's been being had on Reddit a lot, things like that at the moment. And I've heard a lot of people make the argument that like, you know, this isn't like when, uh, I'm, I'm trying. I'm even. I'm even losing track of their argument because I, I try not to to bring in too much outside content to affect my own. But essentially, this boils down to like, why in the NFL would a team go away from what they normally do to beat another opponent? Like, it's not to me crazy to look at a matchup. Like, it's not. And it's not the player's job to sit there and go, "We can't beat this team on this composition." It's the coaching staff's job to go. Right. I think our best opportunity to win this matchup is to play this way. Um, It doesn't have to come from the players. I know a lot of teams use kind of the teamwork coaching aspect and the coaches work very well with the players, but I think this is an instance where it probably hurt the outlaws, maybe just gave, you know, cost them a bit of an outside chance Mm -hmm. uh, to be able to play something else. It's like if you're playing against a defense that, you know, has a a terrible run defense, but the two best quarterbacks in the league, you probably run the ball a lot, right? You don't just pass into their best players and get intercepted Mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm You, you do something else. You adapt. You change. You make halftime adjustments. This is These are things that professional sports teams do all the time, and it's something that, for whatever reason, Overwatch League teams think they can't do. Blevins, what's the analog to that in basketball? Because I only have it for football. But I mean, it, it would be like, so if a team is – well, will take Syracuse University, for example. They are just so well-known. Jim Beheim has – run this two three zone for like i don't know 150 years or something i don't i don't know how old he is probably but legitimately probably like 30 years if you're going at syracuse you know they're playing a two three zone traditionally the way to beat a two three zone is to have shooters shoot the ball shoot win on three pointers you're not going to be able to take your big guys and and drive the hall and get a bunch of layups against the two three zone the the zone is designed to stop that you go zone when that happens so if your if your game plan is oh well we're gonna be feeding the ball in and we're gonna be going for layups and 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 easy buckets we're just gonna run that into the two three zone well congratulations you ran right in, into their plan or I mean it's it's not really there's not really a direct analog to it with basketball but I mean like you still have you have to play to win right not to not lose we talked about this. Right, so against that against Ad that two zone, even if you don't have the best shooters in the world, that's your best chance to win. So you that's give your them out to win. You play to your they out. They have a good day. Maybe they're hot today. They hit more than normal. So you, so you go for it. I think that's a perfect analogy. And, and I kind of right. remembered the other side of the argument. And this comes in large part from Frito on your Overwatch. Um, shout outs to Frito. I'm sure most of you subscribe to their YouTube. If you don't, shame on you. You should already. Uh, but I think he's kind of backwards on, on this particular conversation because he says – um, you know, the, it's it's like scoring. It's like it's scored differently. That's why the the analogy doesn't work and how, why it doesn't translate into to pro sports and Overwatch League, because he thinks that the compositions are scored differently, and that doesn't make any sense to me. But his argument is, you know, in goats you can like lose the fight, but you last long enough that your reinforcements show up and you kind of accidentally win the fight anyways. So you just kind of like luck your way into it. You can use spawn advantages, things like that. I'm I'm really oversimplifying his argument. Yeah. Go out and, and watch their video to to really get the the full depth of it. But it's it's just not scored differently, right? Like a checkpoint is a checkpoint, whether I play dive or whether I played goats, and I, I win if I get more checkpoints than the other team did. And I, it's like yes, it's scored based off. Progress. But I don't think that's how. I I haven't watched the video yet, so I could be analyzing it incorrectly. But based on what you just said, I don't think that's what he meant. What I think it's like. It's scored differently in the sense that goats versus goats is not always the same matchup, depending on what point you're on, right? Go attacking goats might be better on point one of uh, 
Volskaya, but defending goats is better on point two of Volskaya, and that's how they're scored differently. That's what I would think. We're like, okay, well, maybe we don't, maybe like we run goats versus goats because we're disadvantaged slightly here, but we can luck our way into that win and then be advantaged in it at the second point, something like that. I could see that argument being made possibly. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to put, I don't want to put words into, into Frito's, into Frito's uh, mouth. So the, the only point I would make, and it kind of, after hearing Bonnie's, explanation of it i think i, I love I, I think it makes a lot of sense in general um and i think the biggest thing and honestly what flame probably should be saying like i think we can all agree that the way that it was handled by flame was not the best way to no get that, that's that was my last point is yeah. why why is the correct form of the argument the clear concise way that's respectful to the, the average viewer and to the people that disagree with you and to your fan base. Why does that come instead of why, like, why are we not getting that from the GM? Why are we getting that from the backup support player? Uh, can't that come from the top of the organization, please? That would just be ideal. Uh, also, how often does a, how often have you heard Brian Cashman, the GM of the New York Yankees talk about the, the like in-game decisions that are happening. How, like you don't hear these things, right. From, especially from the GM, like, right. and you don't hear them from the coach and you don't hear them from the players. Maybe it, depending on the sport, you might hear some stuff from the and players. Certain GMs and owners and things will overstep. Jerry Jones is notorious for speaking, uh, you know, for his coaching staff and things like that. And, right. and he's uh, an exception, it, I think. And he's also kind of like a clown. Like I, right. I don't think any like we respect him as an owner and things like that, but when he opens his mouth and talks X's and O's, it's shut up, Jerry. Just you haven't right. won a Super Bowl in way too long for you to be <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> doing the, this. It, the, to go back to Bonnie's thing, I, I think it makes a lot of sense where even if you're losing and you're not only losing like I, I think his point of if we lose, we learn something is the core of what the argument should be in terms yes. of defending you. And even if you're getting stomped, completely destroyed like they were, it could still be more valuable for you as a Houston Outlaws to run that comp and get stomped and find out why we're getting stomped. Is it because Bumper is doing this? Is it because uh, Tsio Min Su is, 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 is crushing us on this? Like, even if you're getting stomped, why are we getting stomped? When we look back at the tape – Next, you know, over the weekend, or not, I guess during the week, not over the weekend, but when we look over the tape, are we going to get anything from that? And I think if you're the Houston Outlaws and you're planning out your stage, you're not planning on winning this game. If you're, if you're, if you absolutely need to win this game, uh, maybe you do something about it. Maybe you do practice this wacky comp to, to do this win. You practice your wild card, you scrim your wild card so that you can get this win. I think that regardless, the information that is gained, even if it's nothing, I think it's probably worth more to them at this at this point than a win at this particular juncture would be worth. Um, having that wild card for them or or that scrim time on goats and being able to run your goats against the best, um, you know, you can say, okay, well, when a team of Vancouver Titans caliber is playing goats and we do this, we're going to get stomped. So when we play against NYXL, let's not do this. When we play against San Francisco shock, we need to make sure we're not doing this or, Oh, San Francisco shock doesn't play super doesn't play like bumper does. So maybe we can do this a little bit more and, and kind of test that out. I think that's worth more to the Houston outlaws than that specific victory would have been in the grand scheme of things. That's at least where I like, from what Bonnie said, that's what would make that 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 makes sense to me. So, I completely get it. The I'll, and I I'll listen to Bonnie's argument all day, and I just still think at the end of the day, sixty seconds of trying a DPS comp on Paris might give you both things. It gives you three minutes of vods to look at on the map and the comp that you think is best, and then it also gives you that hail mary throw well, up chance. What to just win the game. what map is Paris in that set? Two, Two CP, second, it's the second one. Second one. So they wouldn't. Who would make that call of doing that in the last sixty seconds? It would have uh, had to have been six a player. People right? with microphones that I think. Could have well, been. yeah, then it would have been a player that did it. But it, but like, are you going into that match being like, okay, if we're getting stomped by if we're getting stomped by uh, Vancouver with 
a minute left. Do we just try something? Maybe you do. Maybe, maybe I would go a... personally. I would be going into every single match, regardless of the opponent. Hey, if somebody's just hard stopping you and you've only got one minute left, make a switch, go to what you're comfortable with. I think that's something you see teams do constantly anyways. Yeah. And right. it's just something I mean, Houston we see the May and the Tracer time. switch at yeah. the end of match. Right? We've, we've seen Houston do it plenty in the past yeah. too. It's just, they didn't this time. Um, uh, that's, and, that's definitely fair. But at the end of the day, the only reason we're having this kind of negative conversation about Houston is just because of the way flame presented it to me. It was yeah. very argumentative and like just uh, inflammatory and aimed at the fans and not uh, flames. Not the only one doing this. It's coming from multiple teams, multiple people. Yeah. As a as a whole, across the board, players, knock it off. Stop admonishing fans for caring. It's a right. bad look. You look like a fool. Every single one of you need to stop doing that. Here's the thing, and I think this has been part of our narrative for a long time at a, at a high level. The sport of Overwatch and Overwatch being a sport, and I specifically say sport and not eSport, the Overwatch League being something bigger than, than all of esports, than any other esport, is much more important than any particular team, than any particular player, than any particular game, than any. So, go it's ahead. Guys, teams in first place. Just throwing that out there. <clears throat> it's great being up the top. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> these players, if they want to be remembered and they want to. They want to look back in 10 years and say, hey, we contributed to something that was absolutely amazing and changed how sport is done in the world. They need to swallow their pride and get it with the program. <laughs> like, right. don't be an idiot on Twitter. No one, no one is going to care about you if you're an idiot on Twitter and you're calling people out. And, like, no one's going to care about this particular thing in five years. It's just going to be like this particular conversation we're having right now, this whole like play to win thing. No one's going to care about it in five years and what you it's did or didn't do. <laughs> it's over after this, after we move on to the next section of this podcast, it will not be talked about again. But when you, what can be remembered is that when you look like an asshole and you make the sport look bad, you make everyone look immature when uh, like it's, it's not, I, I'm not going to go off too much, but like take just, a beat. When somebody asks you a question you don't want to answer because you don't like the way your response is, Flame, direct questions to your head coach, Tyrong, who can answer the X's and O's questions. And then when somebody asks him and he goes, "I don't speak English," and oh, okay, I guess the conversation's over and we can just move on now. All right, great, everybody's better for it. Like you don't have to answer to every fan complaint, question, also, everything that comes up. Just don't your go on Reddit. Can, your answer can very easily be. Oh, it's we don't comment on strategy conversations in the middle of a stage. We've still got a lot of opponents in front of us. Uh, we can answer this again yeah. if you still want to talk about it at the end of the stage. And I'll, that's it. What I'll say is that there is a reason that uh, sports teams all have PR training and that you don't necessarily get a particularly interesting or spicy answer about these types of things from players and coaches and staff. <laughs> There's a reason that they don't do that. Uh, and it might be because that's the best way to do it. I don't know. Maybe maybe all of sports has been wrong for this many years. They've been wrong about it, some things. I don't know if it's that. But I think that was a good conversation. I don't even feel bad about taking that long on it. Let's move on here. <laughs> I, th I think it's a – we've talked about this type of thing for a while. The play to win, don't play to not lose. We've talked about this for literally years at this point. Um, and I think it's an interesting conversation to have. So – Let's move on here. Oh, let's, break let's break down the matches for the week. We start off with a heartbreaking rematch from the end of season playoffs last year. New York Excelsior versus Philadelphia Fusion. Death, who do you have? I've got New York in a more confident stance than you do for probably the first time ever. Uh, it is mentioned. possible. I mentioned earlier how Philly looks bad to me. Um, they did get the win against Toronto, but Toronto's got their own issues right now. Sato is a, was a train wreck against London. Um, I have no confidence in the, their ability 
to keep it together this stage. And I think it's going to kind of go south on them pretty fast from right here. It doesn't have to by any means, but nonetheless, the team that has these level of, of problems and, and concerns mm. and um, the poor level of tank play, Sato versus Mono, it could be a bloodbath. And I don't True. I don't want any part of uh, predicting Philly here. I'm, I'm very, very down on them right now. So, yeah, I'm going to give it to New York. Don't get me wrong. I want you to be correct about this. No faith. How, this. However, the last time we had old bad Philly, we, back in stage, was it one or two? Philly ends up giving New York their first loss at a time when Philly did not look great. Uh, this is a long time ago, but Philly, I mean, we talked about it for we we talked about it all last season. We've got good Philly, we got bad Philly. Bad Philly seems to be rearing its ugly head right now. I just can't. I haven't seen good Philly in a long time. That you're not wrong. You, I've you're seen Philly pull, up, pull five wins out of seemingly their butts in stage one, but and I don't think they were as bad then as they look now. But I think their record was way better than them last stage. Sure, um, and I just think they're headed in the wrong direction at the moment. I'm, I want you to be correct about that. However, I mean, they play New York and Houston this week, so we're both pretty invested in them being bad at the moment. Yeah, well. I get it. The I, scar I, tissue from the one match your team they, lost unexpectedly last season. No, is, two, they lost two matches to Philly last season. They lost in the playoffs and they lost in the regular season. That's unacceptable. The playoffs, they beat themselves. Oh, regardless, uh, I got New York. I mean, I still have New York winning here. I just, I, I, I'm giving them a 3-1. New York has been getting better about actually caring about that last match or that last map. But even still these, the, I'm telling you, it's just like soul versus NY it's, teams, it's reasonable teams upplay themselves. Teams overplay what they are expected to when they play against NY. That's just, I don't care if there's nothing. It's magic. It's sports magic. And you know, for a fact that that exists, you cannot look me in the eye and tell me that sports magic doesn't exist. Teams play better against certain teams for no reason whatsoever. Oh, definitely yeah. Definitely and New York's is one of those teams that teams do it. But regardless, I still got NY here. Three, one. Let's move on here. This one saddens me. We've got San Francisco shock versus the Toronto defiant. I'll just I'll just rip the band-aid right off. I'm picking San Francisco to win this one three one, and I'm being generous with the one win uh yeah, I'm, for I'm not, Toronto. <laughs> I, I got I got a four zero for the shock here. Um Toronto's got a lot of questions to figure out, and yeah. San Francisco is not a team you want to be trying to figure things out against right now. Uh it's it's gonna be a really, really tough out for Toronto. Um I do have faith in them to rebound. This is just not the get right opponent that they need at the moment. So right. what they need right. to do is get out of this match alive and then take the rest of the week off because this is their only match of the week. Yes. So they can just kind of get some rest, get into scrims, get things figured out mm -hmm. um, and come back for week three and, and just try to salvage the stage. Like you're probably not going to make playoffs. Uh, that's fine. You don't no, wait, stage this is, playoffs. This is week three. Or go, yeah, go into week four. So yeah. it's, it's Houston week two, yes. which is a different, different thing. <laughs> right. You were just like, uh, I, you didn't even show up the first week. Yeah, I don't no, care what happened. Yeah, I did not. I've, I phoned it in. I played a lot of Sea of Thieves. What can I say? <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I've got uh, the San Francisco Shock here, 4-0. Toronto, just get out alive, like I said, and then figure it out from there. Take a map for me, guys. Just take take one, and I'll be happy. be great. Next up, we got Florida Mayhem versus LA Gladiators. Florida, whoa, whoa, you're not. whoa, whoa. whoa. I'm changing your score. Fine, fine. It's not New York. It's not New York. I you can give that. I can give five O's, but I, <laughs> I guess that kind of alludes to the fact that I'm going Gladiators four O instead of. I feel like you just wanted to you just wanted to one up my four O that I put in there I'll, before. I was going to do six O. <laughs> <laughs> Florida, I give me. Some... <laughs> I even picked your New York five O's for you last week since you weren't here to do it. I, was, I, I saw was that. For you. That's true. I was looking out for you, Florida. Show um, me something. I need a heartbeat before I I can give you map wins. Yeah, they step backwards a little bit for me this week. Like I was talking about how maybe they're not such an easy out. And granted, I mean they got beat up by New York. What did what did we really expect right. of them? Uh, but they also lost three to one against the Paris Eternal, who I think are are a little improved from where they kind of ended last stage at with their their new roster additions and things like that. But. Um, I, I expected a little closer. I don't know. I didn't feel like the maps. It was a long time ago. It was the first map uh, match right. of the week. But, um, you know, I, I 
from what I remember of it, they weren't competitive in the three maps that they lost, and I, I really expected them to be. Uh, but hopefully over time. Bare hands, though, my man. You promised me irons in the fire. Uh, irons in the fire are usually hot. You guys are pretty cold right now. Mm-hmm. You you put put out a gif of you squeezing a Florida orange juice, right? There, you had juice. You were leaking. Nothing happened. You didn't do anything. You did literally nothing. There was a video that he made that said that they're making changes. It was the announcement of. It was the tease of an announcement of the announcement. I'm done. I don't. I can't. I can't care about until that I'm being burned by the by the irons. <laughs> To reiterate the gif that I put on Twitter when talking to you, Barry, as it's come on, let's go. Like we got it. Yeah. Now's the time. I shouldn't hit my desk. One podcast. <laughs> it's apologies. okay. I don't need ears. That was probably loud. My bad. <laughs> my bad. I, I won't do that again. But um, yeah. So like we, you have to to add players. You have to change this roster. Mm-hmm. You you've gotten a little bit better, but you're a far cry from even adequate for Overwatch League standards right now. I'm still at the point I think your academy team would be better. I was just going to say I think I would pick Mayhem Academy at this point. Uh, That's probably not true, but I'm going to say it is, though. Let's move on and talk about... Put Sia player on there, and we might have something. True, true. Vancouver Titans versus Dallas Fuel here. Uh, We are solidly in Vancouver don't lose till Vancouver lose territory. Give me that 4-0. I'm big on Dallas this stage, and so far they're they're proving me right, and I don't want to be right about this. So, I, but but you kind of do. So the rivalry actually exists. So right, I want I want if they could be undefeated going into getting four would by Houston in, in the the home game, that would just be the the greatest timeline possible. But um, you know, I think uniquely against Vancouver, Dallas is is really going to match up very poorly against them mm-hmm. um, because. I worry about Dallas's ability to flex out of the goats in even King of the Hill and play kind of a DPS strategy. I think that's going to be a rough go for them. I think we've enjoyed seeing them flex a little bit on purpose, deliberately with note. I don't think that's necessarily the plan going forward. I think they're going to stick very true to the goats composition, uh, even in this matchup against Vancouver. And, We'll, use, we'll just copy-paste Bonnie's argument over to this and say that it's the, the right call, and I'm fine with that. Um, but, yeah, I think Dallas doesn't even need the win and maybe as bad as, as um, Houston might have. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't think Dallas has the ability to take that King of the Hill map without the DPS savvy that Houston had. And I think Goats on Goats, again, Vancouver, the only one I wouldn't pick them to beat in a, in a Goats mirror match is New York. So... I don't see where in the maps here Dallas gets a win. I expect them to be competitive. I expect them to be close. Maybe they can steal one, but this isn't a match Dallas is going. So 4 Vancouver. Speaking of matches that aren't going to be close, we move on to New York Excelsior versus Atlanta Rain. Atlanta Sands de France, not looking great so far. I got New York here 5-0. Patented. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go New York 4-0 for my fifth. This is a 5-0 because this is my fifth 4-0 that I'm picking in a <laughs> row. Uh, so I think this is officially a 5-0 for me as well. But um, yeah, Atlanta is a bit of a mess right now. We don't know why Fred is playing uh, in the off tank position. Rumor has it Daco will be back for week three. That's not going to make a difference against New York, but boy, it might give them a chance to steal a map or something like that. I don't really know. Um, but this needs to just be thought of as like getting the team squared away, right? It seemed like Dogman got full play time uh, this past week. So keep that rolling, um, get get Deco back in and just get everything squared away. Keep integrating Baby Bay, keep improving. Mm-hmm. Um, the stage is slipping from you, but again, it's a season game, not a stage game. So right. eye on the prize. This isn't the one you're going to get, but but, you know. Just keep trying to get it back, Atlanta. You don't your season doesn't have to be over, but it's it's slipping and they need to stabilize. Now if you're Atlanta here, do you run the goats into goats or do you try to just go, let's just wildcard it here? I mean, I watched Erster get a six K, like literally <laughs> aced an opponent this weekend playing Tracer on Eichenwald. Um I don't think Atlanta is a cookie cutter play the meta team, and mm-hmm. I don't think they're ever going to be. I think they'll always be able to play the meta, 
um, and be able to reasonably roll out there. They're not going to ignore it, but they're always going to have those those niche other strategies, I think, in their back pocket. So I would expect them to use them. I don't think we're just going to – I don't know the map pool off the top of my head, but I don't expect them to just roll out and play GOATs nonstop against New York. I like it. I also like the fact that New York is going to destroy them 500 to zero. <laughs> Moving on, we've got your big match of the week here. Philadelphia Fusion versus Houston Outlaws. Death, start us off. I actually think this is the easier of the two matchups for Houston this week. I'm, uh, but I just went on a bit of a tirade about Philly. Um, I'm going Houston 3-1 to one here. I think Philly's got a really good chance to take Anubis off of us. But Busan, Eichenwald, and Gibraltar are Houston maps. Lifetime, they are 18-4 and four on these particular maps. Uh, you only have to win three maps in order to win a series of Overwatch. So uh, I am going to give it to... Houston there, uh, yeah, three to one. I think, honestly, though, Anubis is winnable. This could be a 4-0 for Houston. It's really going to depend. I was really, really happy with how they came out last week, but um, whether or not this is a decisive Houston win versus a very, very close matchup, I think depends largely on Philly, right? Because uh -huh. just because Sado, we, you talked about it, you touched on it, just because Sado's playing bad now, we've seen him not play that bad in the past, right? So if he can uh -huh. get back to okay and not be a huge liability. Uh, but going into some of these maps... Uh, I really hope we get to see some potential. Um, I mean, we know basically we're going to see the, the links or composition on Busan. Um, I think they're definitely going to be able to take King of the Hill there. Uh, Gibraltar, they have a ridiculous win rate on. Eichenwald was one of those four, you know, one of those four losses on the combined map pool was last week Eichenwald against Vancouver. And they mm -hmm. played that super, super well. So if that was any other team, they probably would have won that map and we'd be talking about 19 and three lifetime. I was not kidding when I said these map these, these maps and this map pool for this stage very much so favor Houston and their play style and what historically they've done well on. This will be the first time seeing Gibraltar this stage from them. So it doesn't have to remain a good map, but I'm going to keep it in their category mm -hmm. until I see that it's not because they were that dominant on it last time around so um yeah i've got houston winning three to one here i do think even if good philly shows up we're at most talking about like a three to two houston win i, I just really i don't know philly's really got to bounce back and, and show something in this meta or leave it entirely and i think that might give them like if they went into hard dps which mm -hmm. i don't expect them to do i think that might be enough to give them the chance to beat houston here um, just gives Carpe and EQO the chance to be more at home and more, you know, yeah. more comfortable. Uh, that can only help them. So, but yeah, right now I'm, I'm leaning Houston three one. Who do you got? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm picking Philly here. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a close one. <laughs> the maps do not look good for Philly. <laughs> they look very good for Houston. I will give you that. But again, give me a little sports magic. This is uh, this is one of those ones that's complete prefaced, like you mentioned on Philly. If Philly gets completely dumpstered by NYXL and there's no signs of life there, flip this one back to, to Houston. But I don't know. If it, I just I can't count Philly out. I just can't do it. I've done it before, sure. and I'm not going to do it yet now. Um, all signs are pointing, pointing to Houston, but I do think this one could certainly be close. This, I think, is, is a divergent point for both of these teams for this stage. I think – if Houston wins this, they're they, they could be you know really solidifying themselves for a stage playoff berth. I mean, like they've already got the the worst out of the way, right? Like they played against Vancouver. Um, they are playing against New York this stage. Is, are they playing against New York this stage? Okay, they're not playing against New York this stage. So like they've got literally the hardest out of the way. They, they have lost Philly, Shanghai. Seoul, Dallas, and then Charge, Spitfire. Okay, so like all very much winnable here. So this is a big one for for Houston. Um, you know, in, in a sense, a big one for Philly as well. Um, I, I think this is almost like a, a stage placement match for sure. Um, this could be Philly's bounce back. This could be Houston's projection. Uh, you know, the the start of the run really. But you know, my my gut says Philly, so. That does mean we are bringing out our good friend, Mr. Coin, for the first time this week. Tails never fails for Houston. Ted's the coin. I wanted Got to him. Tweet, but I couldn't do it. Philly. Got to respect the integrity of the coin. Philly, baby.
The, the coin hasn't seen play, didn't see Sato play last week either. So I forgive both you and the coin. True, true, <laughs> true. Uh, for Pickham's sake, man, I don't know what the what the fan numbers are, but this is a. Uh, I think this definitely lean towards Houston. But if it's if it's, I think the fan numbers heavily favor Philadelphia. Really? If, if that's are, the case, snap Houston. Then I'm I'm going to check the numbers on it right now. But I remember being surprised. People are just like really like they're trying to force the narrative that Houston's just uh-huh. a terrible team, and it's there's fun. just only, <laughs> only. I mean, it's sure, but like that doesn't mean there's been anything to to demonstrate that or to to back right. that up at any point. Certainly not to the point where eighty five percent of the vote is going towards Philadelphia at the moment. Really, that, that is horribly incorrect, um, and should be flat. That is if, a yeah. That's if you're a, playing from okay. behind. I'm gonna keep my pick for the sake of keeping it, but if you're playing for pickums here, that's a that's a windmill slam flip right there. G- give me give me Houston on the on the flip alone. Go look at the map numbers yourself. I'm telling you, they <laughs> they favor Houston. Yeah, but moving on, we've got LA Valiant versus Washington Justice, and I think history may be made again because this is going to be the first time this stage that LA oh no actually no it's not because they lost it'll be the first time this stage that a one win team beats another one win team yes maybe Uh, well (laughs) I I was going to say it's the first time that LA Valiant have gotten two wins in a row but that's not actually true it's going to be the first week it's going to be the first consecutive week that LA Valiant have brought in wins here Uh, but that is of course the illusion that I've got LA Valiant First time three to all one. stage we're we're picking the Valiant to win and we both got them True. three to one. Um listen, Washington, why are you taking the man off of Widowmaker? He is like a savant on it. It is an absolute treat to watch. It's the only redeeming quality you guys have as a team right now. Mm-hmm. You could probably honestly just literally line Corey up on Widowmaker every single match and just watch the jerseys sell. Like maybe not in droves, but like the man is just ridiculous on the hero mm-hmm. and it's a, a great to watch. Just play it all the time. I, I'm Your a, season is over, just play it all I'm, the time. I'm also at the point now where I think even though I've I've felt it in my heart for quite some time, I can now just say it. Janice is just straight a feeder. There there's no it just he's a feeder. It's, it's getting a little better with Ark. And I don't know Is if it it's... Though? It, I, I'm not... I don't blame you, and I'm very close to with you. But I would ideally, before I called it, like to see them replace Sansam and try one more time. But I also think they should, at the same time, be signing Janice's replacement in case it doesn't work over, like, two matches and look better. Like, that's, that's all I would need. It's, it would be a short leash, but I don't know. San Sam's not been awful, but I, I don't know. Fool me once, play mono. Fool me twice, <laughs> trade him to Washington Justice. Fool me three times, Janice is a feeder. Uh, that's what I've got for you. That didn't make any sense whatsoever. No, I had no, I had no idea where I was going with that when I started it, and I, I award you zero points it. and I, God have mercy on you. I, <laughs> I regret doing it, and with that, we're gonna move on here to the Hangzhou Charge versus the, or sorry, the Hangzhou Spark versus the Guangzhou Charge. Here, we got another coin flipper. Who do you got, Death? We do. Uh, I'm going to give this one to Hangzhou three to two. I think they're improving slightly over time. It's really hard to say because they don't look great, but they have pieces that I really, really like. Like IDK looks really good. I thought Bebe had a decent week last week. I think Gushui is going to get more and more comfortable over time. Um, we're in a meta that allows them to pull out, you know, the, the crystals and the God's bees and le- kind of let them flex a little bit more. Uh, maybe we need to see a DPS meta for them to really level up, but Guangzhou to me just kind of seems to be hanging tight, hang, holding pat, not not really improving quite at the rate of the rest of the team. So I'm going to say Hangzhou, but it is razor thin. I think this one's super close. Yeah, I mean, how, how can you how can you count out our boy? I mean, I, I, I you gotta you gotta have some faith in Eileen here. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with everything that you're saying. I do think that Guangzhou and Hong Guangzhou and Hongzhou have both 
kind of mellowed out in terms of where they're going. <laughs> they're really kind of both leveling out at the bottom middle of the pack right now. Um, Hangzhou, I think, had a little higher expectation uh, going into the, into the stage, or sorry, into the season than Guangzhou has. But Guangzhou has, has had some, like, weirdly close matches and some weird wins. Like, they... They brought it to the brink with with or it was either three one or three two against Vancouver the first time they played them, which regardless of the situation, that's impressive in and of itself. Um, I think Guangzhou. I mean, I guess the problem, the good thing and the bad thing here is that Guangzhou has two winnable matches this week, so they're theoretically putting scrim time into both. They're playing against Atlanta later, which we'll talk about, but I think this is a winnable match for Guangzhou. They have got two winnable matches this week, so they're really, I think, if there's a week for them to really focus and hone in and and right the ship, this is this is that week. Two winnable but not easy matches uh, whatsoever. I've got Guangzhou uh, 3-2 here. Just, like, this is the week for them to do it if they're going to do it, so... I'm, I'm I'm giving them a little faith here, right. which well, doesn't means mean we got to get the coin. Uh, we got tails for Hangzhou, and we've got tails coming up. So the coin's giving it to Hangzhou. All right. What do you say we pick up the pace for the last half of these? Here? Yes, sir. Moving on, we've got London versus Boston here. Uh, I don't think there's too much, uh, not not too much to say here. Pretty clear cut London victory here. We both got them three one. Any uh, additions here? Yeah, Boston already gave up the five map streak or whatever the the, the five game five streak or whatever mm-hmm. it was. So um, if they, they're going to come back down to earth a little bit, they're going to remain a solid team because Huck sold his soul to the devil and just can't <laughs> sign a bad player to save his life. Um, but yeah, I, it's I just have a you know a little bit more faith in London, who does seem to be fitting into this meta pretty nicely. So yeah, I'm going with them three to one. Likewise, moving on, we got Shanghai Dragons versus the Florida Mayhem. Death, who you got? Uh, man, I have no faith in Florida, but I'm not super sold on Shanghai either. So even though it doesn't do me any good in pickums, I'm going to pick the Cowards 3-0 because that is the limit of faith that I can have in Florida that they might not lose one map, but I can't see them winning it either. So Shanghai 3-0. I'm going back to my old habits here. Such an idiot. I You're such an idiot. I, you know what? I'm <laughs> here's the chance, Florida. I've I've I sold you short for so long because you've done me wrong for so many weeks in a row. But you know what? I'm I'm having to change your heart. Give me Florida three to one here for no particular reason other than It's Shanghai, man. Beat Shanghai. I didn't get a single win. I can't flip the coin. The coin is boycotting you. It doesn't <laughs> want me to do it. Uh, both sides of the coin are Shanghai. Uh, <laughs> tails for Shanghai, and it's tails. So yeah, yeah, the coin yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know what are you gonna do? Someone, so you know what? Someone's got to believe in Florida. I'm just sad that it's me. They, uh, they that. <laughs> I'm sad that it has to be me. Moving on, we've got Dallas Fuel versus Soul Dynasty Death. I know you're 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 big on Dallas right now. Who do you got? It's gonna be super super close. But at the end of the day, Soul has this disease where they put Fleta on the bench, and it doesn't make any sense. And they they put Fisher on the you're bench, not wrong. and they just don't play their starters. So where this might be something where I go back and forth on it over and over again. I think it'll be pretty close. If I had to guess, I would say soul puts their starters in there, but because I can't say for certain that they even think of those starters as their starters. Mm. Cause in some world there, uh, never mind. Flat, just play flat at forehead. I don't even care about the main tank position at this I've point. Been saying that for quite um, some time. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to give it to Dallas three to two. Uh, I think they're just, they, they have a game plan, and they're executing it 100% of the time, um, and it's working for them right now. They look really strong, so I think they're going to carry through, win this match here. Um, I think they're just kind of too good of a team to, to go, um, yeah, to, to really kind of fall mm-hmm. to a team that's so indecisive and kind of back and forth and, and can't make up their minds about what even their best lineup is. Uh, Soul is, 
I, I just really, at this point, Levins, I think Soul is fundamentally broken just in their mindset and in the way mm-hmm. they approach the league and their team and their strategy as an organization. And I don't and... have any faith in them, despite the talent that they have on the stage. Mm-hmm. I just think it's going to cost them matches, and this is one of them. So pains me to say it. Yeah. Dale, three to two. They have not win, or they have not shown that they can learn from their own mistakes for quite some time. With that being said, uh, my most hated team in the entire league right now, Dallas Fuel. Not going to beat the team. You hasn't shown that they can learn from their mistakes, Blevins? You. Me. That's who. That is, <laughs> you are not wrong. Uh, and in a show of solidarity, I'm picking Soul 3-1 here. Um, play, your st- play Fleta. Play Fleta, and you'll get better. There's an episode title if I've ever heard one. Um, but that does mean that we need another coin flip. Man, we got we got some. We do. We had to after all the four O's I picked to start the True. week. So we had to get a little spice in here. Uh, let's go Tails for Soul because I, I think Dallas is good, but I don't want them to. Uh, and we have heads here. So wow. the coin so, is not having any of, of uh, our hearts right. or your terrible logic. All right. Well. Can't argue with that. Uh, speaking of, nope, that's not the segue I wanted to do. It. But we've got, regardless, we've got LA Gladiators versus Chengdu Hunters. Chengdu uh, is looking a little bit more like Cheng Don't right now uh, in this new meta. <laughs> got their poise. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not not seeing it yet. Uh, they've they've had some signs of of being quite. They've they've had some plays that have been quite good, but overall, not not showing it. I got. LA here three to one. Yeah, I'm with you. I think LA is gonna gonna be able to take that one out. I was big on Chengdu going into this patch. I, I really had faith in them. I thought they would be a considerably better team than Shanghai. They lost to Shanghai last week, so I'm kind of backtracking a little bit on them mm-hmm. at the moment. Um, and there's just no reason to really back down on thinking the Gladiators are one of the top middle pack teams at the moment. So mm-hmm. um, Chengdu certainly could. I think they beat teams that that maybe we expect them to lose to often just because of how weird their comp is, sports magic, like you talked about earlier. Um, It's very hard to scrim against the Chengdu compositions. So uh, there's a chance, but I think Gladiators are just the overall better team at the moment. So Mm -hmm. I'll give them three to one and expect them to keep improving. It's hard to predict that wild card, which is why we're not doing it, at least not in this (laughs) one, even though I've tried to do it multiple times this week. Speaking of not predicting anything wild here, we've got Vancouver Titans versus Boston. Uh, insert my aforementioned statement about Vancouver not losing until they do. I got Vancouver here four to zero. I got three to one. Uh, Boston is pretty together. I think they're going to be able to maybe take a map. It's not like Vancouver's map differential has been flawless. We talked about them going to five against Guangzhou last stage, mm-hmm. things like that. So I think it's reasonable to give Boston a map. I want them to be terrible, but they're not. So three to one. Yes, sir. Next up, we got Houston versus Houston Outlaws versus Shanghai Dragons. I'll give, I'll give you this one. Houston, Houston three, one, especially if like the, the performance of Houston versus Philadelphia can be telling of this match. Mm-hmm. Um, but if, even if it's, even if it's close, I'm still picking Houston here. Three, one. Yeah. Uh, I think, like I said earlier, I think it's going to be probably a little closer than the Philly match in my mind, unless you good Sado shows up for like the second time ever in overwatch league. <laughs> um, but I think in, that's in part because cough is Oasis and that's the one cough map. Houston has been historically a little bit worse at, mm-hmm. but again, they were historically worse at all of king of the hill last season and that's where a lot of those numbers come from so i do think they're likely to get the three to one here a three to one win here the map pool for this match is still pretty good not quite as good as as the philadelphia match um but yeah i think it's going to be interesting to say the least and i'm trying to find the pick em percentage on it because i'm also pretty certain it is heavily shanghai favored here um, the community has officially all your jokes and around the payload, Blevins, just because it's fun to to pick on Houston. It's doing it's doing our fans a disservice. I don't think they. I think people are pretty stupendously wrong about them at the moment, and I don't even have them as a great team. But yeah, it's seventy one percent in favor of Shanghai in this pick. 
Ah, man, I don't know. People, call, call me people old aren't fashion. actually opening their eyes and watching the Houston Outlaws play, I think, is what's going on. Well, Every time anybody wants to talk about it, it's still like, well, they lost to Boston and Toronto in week one, stage one, and it's like, it was forever ago, bro, and it was like two team fights away from a 2-0 and start. Like, let's yeah, step uh, back also, and look at it. Call me old-fashioned, <laughs> but back in my day, the Shanghai, a Shanghai Dragon, uh, a win does they not get. Um Man, I didn't think I could say something stupider than whatever I said before, but here we are, finding Stop it again. Weeks off, bro. <laughs> I, my brain is like completely scrambled right now, but we'll end it out strong here. Two more matches left in the week. We got Hangzhou Spark versus San Francisco Shock. I really don't have much to add here. Easy Shock 4-0. They are looking great here. Uh, they are very heavily pushing towards being a solid, uh, if they're not already there, number three team in the league with uh, potentially showing shades of uh, of being in that upper echelon with NY and, and Vancouver. Yeah, I'm going to pick San Francisco here as well, confidently. I'm going to call it a three-to-one win because my San Francisco Shock players are really underperforming in fantasy for me right now because they're winning too fast. So I need them to, to be a little more competitive in the wrong direction so that I don't lose to Blevins again in any more expert. Well, you Seven won't lose points. to me again this week Good because job. we're not playing. Uh, <laughs> but you never know. Um, that was also with me running Fisher, who got a big fed zero last week, just uh, FYI. Uh, but yeah, we'll be talking. Joe Ben only had like 60 points. Yeah, yeah you're right, though. Next show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have plenty of times to butt our heads against those numbers uh, after this. Uh, last match of the week, we've got Atlanta Rain versus Guangzhou Charge. I'll start it off. I already talked about Guangzhou having a really big week for them uh, in terms of their stage, in terms of just where they sit in terms of the league two winnable matches this is a right the ship week if i've ever seen one for guangzhou i got him 3-1 here against a severely weakened atlanta rain yeah atlanta can easily take this one i think it's going to be razor thin because i think atlanta is a good team that's in shambles right now and i think the guangzhou charge are a bad team that or at least a not good team mm. That is at least consistently where they are, right? So it's a team that, like, is just really hard to predict in Atlanta because we just don't know what – they just lost to the Valiant, for Pete's sake. So um, it's very hard to pick them to win, but I do think if Daco comes back in for Fred, uh, then I think there's a really good chance they're, they're competitive, able to steal it. But, yeah, I've got to lean Guangzhou, but I'll call it a 3-2 to two because I think it's that close. Yeah, I think it's going to be close regardless, but uh, I've just got uh... – Got a little more faith in Guangzhou, and I already kind of mentioned why. But that is going to be it for the week here in Overwatch League. Let us know what you thought. Uh, you can always leave us comments and whatnot on the YouTube videos, as well as shoot us messages in Discord. Death, you said One like thing have... about the pick em. I wanted to mention it for both Houston matchups. Philly, when they play against Houston, it's Houston's first match. Philly plays the night before. Um and the same thing is true for Shanghai. Like, both teams that they play against are coming off back-to-back -back matchups, and Houston even has the day off in between the two. So I think that also helps a good little bit. But, um, yeah, that's the last. It just fix those pick and percentages. They're broken and they're wrong. Are they actually broken and wrong, or are the fans just broken and wrong? Yes. Okay. Got it. Uh, that's all you need to know, folks. But you can always check us out. We're everywhere on all of your social media platforms that you could possibly want. High Noon Podcast. You can also go to highnoonpodcast.com, and we will be there waiting for you, ready to go. Uh, join our Discord. Links all over the place for that. That is where the discussion happens. That's where you can find Deathblow and myself. Uh, you can message us directly or tag us in one of the channels. We are... I would say quite good at responding to stuff uh, regardless. You can also check us out, twitch.tv slash high noon podcast every Monday at 7 Eastern ish, uh, as well as some Tuesdays where around the payload is also hosted. Um, and yeah, that's, that's, that's the place to be for the live shows. We love doing the live shows. We do interact with chat from time to time as well, but guys, that is going to be it make sure to check us out at all those places. You can also support us financially if you so desire over at patreon.com slash high noon podcast. It is how we get all the 
bells and whistles and gadgets and how we get to go to these uh, things like the Overwatch League Grand Finals and BlizzCon. It is how we are able to do that. So you can check us out at patreon.com slash high noon podcast. But that is going to be it for Deathblow. I am the Blevins. And if you are here live, you can stick around for foul play. But otherwise, please remember, it's had noon. Got his boots and he put on his hat. Through the coin away that same day. It's in his past and he's not looking back. He says, Find in mind now, God's my way. Florida one time, one time. Give me, give, give me, give me the win one time, baby, one time. It's gonna be a yikes for me, dog. That's not gonna happen, but I want it so bad. <laughs>